1980, Voyager 1 passed close to the solar planet Saturn. It sent us pics of the planet and its rings, and along with that, it sent a pic of Saturn's largest moon, whose name was Titan, a moon that had a thick atmosphere, a moon that won the hearts of scientists at once. NASA decided that we should visit that moon of the sunny planet again, but this wasn't an easy mission, and hence NASA, ESA, and the Italian Space Agency, ASI, together decided on a mission to go to Saturn. Saturn, a mission in which we would visit the ringed planet for the first time. So what was inside this moon, and what was it like? This moon is said to be prone to life after Earth. We'll find out in today's video. Welcome back, I'm Dr. D. Let's start today's video. Titan which is bigger than Mercury and Pluto in size and after Earth and Venus, is the only such body in our solar system which has a solid surface and a thick atmosphere. That is, if it wasn't in Saturn's orbit but was directly revolving around the Sun, we would call it a planet. But since it's a moon, a special kind of moon, that's why it also has a special name, a moon-like planet. After Jupiter's moon Ganymede, Titan is the second largest moon in our solar system. Titan is 50% larger in size than our moon. Titan's diameter is 5,149 kilometers and it's also 80% more massive than our moon. After getting pics of Titan, scientists became eager to go there. And finally, the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft was launched on October 15, 1997. Cassini's journey was very long. It traveled in space for a total of seven years before safely reaching Saturn's orbit on July 1, 2004. Even before this, three spacecraft had been sent to the ringed planet, Pioneer 11, Voyager 1, and Voyager 2. So we had some data available about Saturn, but those spacecraft only flew by the planet. Cassini was the first mission in which we were going to closely orbit Saturn. The pics sent by Cassini showed us the ringed planet in perfect detail for the first time. Cassini was also carrying a passenger with it during its seven-year journey, a lander that would visit Saturn's largest moon, Titan. This was called Huygens, named after Dutch physicist Christian Huygens, who discovered Titan in 1655. But at that time, no one knew Titan had a thick atmosphere like Earth. This atmosphere was first seen by the Voyager missions. We couldn't see inside that atmosphere through the Voyager telescopes, though. We had to find out what was inside it. To know this, Cassini Huygens was sent to Titan. The Cassini spacecraft was built by NASA, and the Huygens lander was made by ESA, the European Space Agency. By the end of 2004, Cassini Huygens reached Titan's orbit, and on December 24, 2004, Huygens detached from Cassini to begin its mission. At the same time, Cassini also started sending pics of Titan from orbit, but we were only able to see Titan's hazy atmosphere through them. When Cassini's radar camera attempted to peer beneath the haze, it saw dark, and light-colored patches that looked like oceans and seas. As Huygens entered Titan's atmosphere, it started continuously sending pics back to ESA's mission control center. Due to Titan's low mass, its gravity is low too, and this causes its atmosphere to extend very high, about 975 kilometers above the surface. Huygens entered at a speed of about 6 kilometers per second. Even up to 500 kilometers, only a faint atmosphere was visible. Huygens' parachutes opened, slowing it down. As it descended, the images became clearer and small mountains were spotted. Along with this, we can also see patterns similar to rivers in the pics sent by Huygens. Just like what's seen here on Earth, which is very strange, because Titan is about 1.4 billion kilometers away from Earth, where the temp is about minus 189 degrees Celsius. How could such liquid rivers and oceans be possible there? Titan's thick atmosphere is made up of 98.4% nitrogen, 1.4% methane, methane, and 0.1% hydrogen gas. That means after Earth, Titan has the second most nitrogen-rich atmosphere. But the question running in the minds of scientists was, what had created these liquid rivers? Because it isn't possible for water to remain liquid at such cold temps. The answer was hidden in Titan's atmosphere itself. We see methane present in large amounts after nitrogen. Through lab experiments, scientists found that methane and other hydrocarbons can remain liquid at these low temps. 
course. This means the liquid rivers of Titan aren't made of water, but liquid methane. Yes, liquid methane. Titan is a place that looks exactly like Earth, with mountains, rivers, and seas. But despite having all these, it's completely different from Earth. A completely different world, where there are mountain ranges like on Earth, and deserts like on Earth, and ponds like on Earth. But the composition and essence of both are completely different. Titan's surface is made of icy hydrocarbons and water ice. That means on Titan, the deserts, mountains, and plains are all covered in snow and ice. At Titan's low temps, water behaves like solid bedrock, while methane acts like liquid water. When the Huygens probe landed on Titan on January 14, 2005, it sent these pics to Earth for a few seconds. After Mars, this is the only other body so far from Earth on whose surface we have landed. This is the farthest place from Earth where a manned probe has landed. Even in Titan's strange world, there are rains and storms too. Titan is a world that's unique unto itself, a world made of rivers of our fuel. Titan's rivers could meet humanity's fuel needs for centuries. Scientists believe some other form of life may be thriving in Titan's methane oceans, whose chemistry would be completely different from life on Earth. Yes, a special type of bacteria that can live comfortably in that environment because Titan is rich in organic compounds. The possibilities for life there are high. The only difference would be that any life flourishing on Saturn's moon would be completely alien to us, a species from a different world that would be very different from life on Earth. These two moons of Saturn, Titan and Enceladus, are both very special. We mapped much of Titan's North Pole with Cassini as it orbited between 800 to 1,200 kilometers above Titan's atmosphere. Cassini collected and transmitted about 4 trillion bytes of data on Titan's surface back to Earth. Titan is so far that whatever Cassini saw there, we saw an hour later on Earth. To show us this strange world, Titan, years of effort were needed. And finally we got the reward. We learned a lot about Titan, but our journey was still incomplete. Now Cassini had to visit Enceladus and Saturn itself. We have more to cover. Saturn's rings, its moons, Enceladus, and more on Titan. We'll talk about Saturn in another episode. So for today, this much on Titan, Saturn's largest moon. If you like this video, please like it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do for more such interesting videos and turn on notifications. I'll meet you with another new video soon. Till then, goodbye.